That's a crazy entrance. Subscribe. Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. And on today's episode of Early Access Review, we are going to be taking a look at the latest S rank Fire Anomaly Agent Bernice, right? Her full kit has already been reviewed in the story trial mode that we have played last week. So if you guys want to take a look at exactly what her skill does as well as her mindscape, feel free to check out my previous video over here. So for this specific video, I'll be going through exactly how do we play here with the optimal team comps as well as some of her drive this W engine as well as mindscape recommendations, right? So without further ado, let's get into today's content. I'll just be jumping straight into useful information that you guys can make use in your own Bernese gameplay. Starting with this thing, these attacks, you will pretty much never use them for the entirety or rather 99% of the situation when you are playing Bernice, right? So these are the five attacks. Number one, her basic attack chain, you will never ever use it because not only does it build up very slowly, it doesn't even apply burn unless you press the enhanced heavy or the final segment, right? And then number two is going to be when you're using your E skill or the special EX skill without any energy, definitely don't do that. And then number three is going to be your dodge counter. Number four is going to be your dash attack. And number five is going to be your quick assist, which is, which is when another one of your unit gets hit and he's swapping Bernice, right? So these five attacks you are pretty much never ever use with Bernice. So the only few attacks that you will actually use with Bernice are as follows. Her EX special attack when you have enough energy, her parry counters, which is when you use Bernice to parry, her chain attacks, which is the thing you use when the enemy is dazed, as well as her ultimate. Right? So these are attacks that is a lot more frequent and it will help your overall gameplay feel a lot better if you focus on these attacks. Essentially, to kind of summarize Bernice kit. She is truly Zenless Zone Zero's very first all-field DPS. If you guys play Watering Waves, then she performs exactly just like Yingling by applying the Afterburn Mark, which is when you can swap her all-field and any main DPS or rather the unit on the field right now can trigger Afterburn, which does additional fire damage, building up our burn anomaly every once every 1.5 seconds, right? So with that being said, here are the three most important things that you want to know with Bernice, starting with her EX Special Skill. For Bernice EX Special Skill, there's basically two different modes the single flame thrower as well as the double flame thrower now there are both pros and cons when it comes to both modes it's not like one is strictly better than the other but i will go into why i like to use one over the other so for the single flame thrower it is technically more energy efficient because you only use 25 percent of your maximum energy to generate roughly 50-55% of the enemy's total burn anomaly build up. Whereas the double flame thrower, you will use 50% of your total energy, but you will accumulate only 80-ish percent of the total burn anomaly build up, which means that the best energy to burn a normally uh, then single flame thrower is going to be more bang for your buck so that's going to be that but generally speaking i do find myself preferring to use the double flame thrower because it builds up at a lot faster pace so you can see that even though it is only at roughly 80 percent normally build up it is basically done at double the speed to reach this 80 percent burn anomaly build up right and generally speaking when i'm playing Zenith zone zero rotation speed is always very very important it doesn't really matter that much if we truly trigger the burn anomaly right now with the specific ex special attack because bernice also has the afterburn and afterburn itself can also build on our burn anomaly over time right so generally speaking i do prefer finding myself using the double flame thrower so back into the main dps and then continuing the rotations after we get enough energy to use bernice again right so uh, that is what i found with the single versus double burn flame thrower now with that being said how do we trigger the double flame thrower so the double flame thrower can be triggered in three different functions aside from pressing skill into skill again so aside from skill and skill another way you can use the double flame thrower is after using your heavy attack your heavy attack is basically when she does a little spin spin tornado and then you can instantly press E if you have enough energy to go into double flame thrower, right? Then number two is going to be after you use a parry assist. So whenever you parry with Bernice, if you have enough energy, instantly pressing E will allow us to do the double flame thrower again. And then number three is going to be through our chain attack. So if you were to use Bernice as the final member in the chain attack, pressing E immediately will allow us to use the double flame thrower. Some of the attacks that you are going to be focusing on Bernice, it seems to be almost identical to 
the kit that you want to use to trigger double flame thrower, uh, which are basically your heavy attacks, your parry attacks, your chain attacks, as well as your ultimate essentially, right? So now that being said, despite having the exact same 50% energy expenditure, different users of this double flame thrower will have different anomaly build up rate. So the ordinary double flame thrower, which is when you use a skill into a skill again, this will create roughly 80% on normally build up, like I mentioned at the start of the video, right? But if you would use the heavy attack, which is when just the spin spin into a double flame thrower, this will allow us to trigger 100% burn anomaly, instantly tr triggering burn for the enemy target. Another one is if you would use a parry assist, if you were to parry with burnies, then if you use the EX special with the double flame thrower, it can also create 100% anomaly build up. Finally, if you were to use burnies in a chain attack, so if she's the last member in a chain attack, use Using this double flame thrower will build up 145% of the anomaly. So after you trigger the first burn, it will also continue to add on even more burn, bringing on to the next burn anomaly, which we are going to be triggering afterwards, right? So, so if the double flame thrower or the EX special skill established, let's go on to the next most important, which is going to be the nitro fuel state, right? Which is the heat you see at the top left hand corner over there. So if you can see the ability real quick, she will accumulate up to 100 heat, 1.4 heat per one point of energy. And at 50 heat and above, she enters the natural fuel cocktail state. So in this state, whenever we hit an enemy with a basic attack, EX special attack, chain attack, or ultimate, this will apply the scorched effect to the target until she exits the natural fuel cocktail state. So scorched status is the one that marks the afterburn effect. You can see the little fire in the middle of the enemy. That is the afterburn effect. Expanding eight heat to deal fire damage equal to 350% of her attack and accumulate fire anomaly build up. And for every 10 anomaly proficiency, damage increased by 1% up to 300, which means you want to have minimum 300 anomaly proficiency. The damage from the afterburn effect is considered as assist attack damage. Keep in mind, the afterburn damage, it is not considered as an anomaly, so it does in fact crit. I've noticed that sometimes this additional afterburn effect, it can in fact crit. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be tied to burnness crit rate or crit damage, so we're going to need further testing, but generally speaking, I'll kind of move on later on in the W engine as well as drive this segment. You kind of still want to build anomaly efficiency and anomaly mastery instead of crit rate, but I'll explain that a little bit later on, right? So at 100 maximum hit, you can trigger up to 13 afterburn damage and each of these can be triggered once every 1.5 seconds. After 13 afterburn hits, that's when Bernice heat will be fully expanded. You kind of want to rotate back into Bernice again, use the EX special to build up the heat and then afterwards the cycle continues itself, right? So something to keep in mind, each afterburn proc can also contribute to our burn anomaly. From what I've seen so far is that after 13 afterburn procs on a level 70 training dummy over here, it accumulates roughly 80-ish percent of the total burn anomaly build up, which kind of ties back to my original point, which is I, I do prefer to use Bernie's uh, double flame thrower because it's very fast. And even if it's not very efficient in terms of energy to burn anomaly, this afterburn can also help us contribute towards the uh, burn anomaly effect, right? So, so with that being established, a rough concept of using Bernie so far is going to be be assuming that on your entire team has enough energy, you first want to open up with a support. This can be Seth, Caesar, King, or Lucy. After applying the skills, you soap into Bernice because she always starts the battle with 100 heat. Apply your afterburn, and once the afterburn is applied, you can instantly switch into your main DPS. This can be Jane Doe, or it could even be Grace. It could even be your crit DPS. Any unit that attacks the enemy at this point can trigger afterburn once every 1.5 seconds. And then after your main DPS rotation, is over, you can swap back into Bernice again, use up her EX special attack double flame thrower, which will generate a huge amount of heat, and then the cycle kind of repeats itself, slotting in your support whenever possible to build up the buffs for both of our DPS, right? So there is a general thought process as to how do we function rotate Bernice utilizing her core mechanic. And finally, the additional ability, you really, really, really want to trigger this, and you'll pretty much almost always trigger this, since Bernice does excel very well when you pair up with an anomaly unit, right? This could be Jane Doe or Grace. When Bernice Bernice's basic attack, EX special attack, a uh, single flame thrower or double flame thrower hits an enemy, or when afterburn is triggered, the moves accumulated fire anomaly build up increased by 65%. When any squad member applies burn effect to the enemy, the duration of the 
effect is extended by 3 seconds. And as we all know by now, in Xenon Zone 0, any anomaly unit is very, very tight to how quickly can we stack on this anomaly build-up status. So having a 65% fire anomaly build-up additional increase is going to be very, very important to see Bernice triggering the burn effect as frequently as possible. And speaking about this point, I just briefly want to touch on Bernice total damage output, majority of it is actually not coming from the afterburn, which is the off-field damage. Majority of Bernie's damage still comes from her personal DPS, which is the EX special attack, her ultimate, as well as the actual burn getting applied by all of her entire kit, right? So it is not specifically the afterburn, although it is a decent chunk of damage, it is not a ridiculous chunk of damage. So you can see it from the testing we've done over here, each trigger of the afterburn deals roughly 10,000. So after 13 afterburn procs is roughly 130,000 damage over the course of 15 seconds, which honestly is not that high compared to the actual damage that you get from triggering the burn, triggering disorder with Jane Doe, the actual multipliers from the EX double flame show as well as the ultimate. So generally speaking, the afterburn damage is not the end or be all. You really, really want the actual burn effect as well as Bernie's raw kit for her to get the highest damage possible. So that basically ties up majority of what Bernie's kit has to offer. Once again, this is a very summarized version and it really cuts on that you have to just get straight into exactly how can we make use of Bernie's utilizing her kit, right? One last portion for Bernie's is going to be her ultimate ability. Now, Zeno Zone Zero Devs has really mentioned that they will be reworking the ultimate system in Zeno Zone Zero. I'm not really sure where they're going, but I think a lot more of our units can use our ultimates now instead of just the main DPS, right? So this this one, you can kind of just wait and see how it goes in the future. Even without it, I still find myself really, really liking Bernice Ultimate. In fact, I do use this in priority over Jane Doe or any of our other units' Ultimate because of two main reasons. Bernice Ultimate allows us to get an instant 50 heat which basically it extends our afterburn effect to a much longer duration, applying even more burn anomaly. And it means that you, does, you don't really have to rotate back to Bernice as frequently, uh, which might be a thing if you have any energy issues. So that's number one. And number two, currently Bernice ultimate is the only ultimate in the entire game that she can remain on field while your next unit is also on field. That's right. Bernice ultimate also acts as a all-field DPS. She flies into the air, continuously applying the flamethrower, and in this entire duration, your main DPS can still be on the field applying damage to the enemy. This is a very, very nice little mechanic, and keep in mind, it is basically the quick assist, so you do want to make uh, Bernice in front of your Jane Doe, right? So that's going to be that. And one thing to keep in mind for this ultimate is that although it is very nice. You can stay off field. You can't really control the direction of the ultimate after you use it. So if you can see Bernice EX special flamethrower, it follows the enemy when you lock on. But for Bernice ultimate, if the enemy were to move out of the ultimate range, as you can see from this clip over here, if the unit were to move too far away from the area of the ultimate, then they will no longer take any damage. And if they completely move out of the ultimate, then she will basically do zero damage, right? So this could be a problem. You ideally want to use the ultimate when you're sure that the enemy can be locked into one place or if you're against more immobile enemies such as the uh, construction machine and all kinds of stuff, right? So this is going to be Bernice ultimate. Very, very nice. So with that being established, let's just jump straight into exactly how can we build Bernice. So first of all, for Bernice W engine, her signature weapon, Flame Maker Shaker, raw 30% base attack as well as when an all few equippers energy region increased by 0.6 per second. And when we hit an enemy with EX special or assist attack, damage increased by 3.5%, stacking up to 10 times, which is 35% damage buff lasting for 6 seconds. While all field, this stack effect is gonna be doubled. So that's gonna be very, very nice. And finally, uh, if the number of stacks is greater or equal to 5, get another 50 anomaly proficiency. Generally speaking, the most important function of this W engine is going to be the all-field energy regeneration 0.6 per second because we really, really need this to help us rotate our Bernice very quickly to help us achieve a much faster rotation as long as Bernice have enough energy. But that being said, although this W engine is very, very nice, I found myself 
not really rely on this W engine that much because Bernice has a lot, a lot of very good substitutes. One of which is actually going to be an A rank W engine Roaring Right, which is coming from Piper. Now, if you have a very high refinement for Roaring Right, so if you have like a S5 refinement, then you can see that the most important part of this is going to be the 40% anomaly build up rate on top of the 12.8% attack as well as the 64 anomaly proficiency. Anomaly build up rate is the end or be all and arguably the most important step for any anomaly dps and this is pretty much the most accessible option even if you are free to play right if you have any engines of roaring right this can be an excellent excellent alternative compared to the signature weapon so for an example to kind of compare this a little bit you can see from this cn content creator over here the burn damage when we're using the signature weapon is going to be six nine thousand four hundred and fifty seven and the after burn is going to be ten thousand three hundred ninety two but if we were to equip the roaring right then this damage goes down to nine thousand eighty five for burn and nine thousand two hundred and fifty tree for the afterburn even though the damage did go down the important thing to note is that it actually allows us to build the burn at a faster pace because bernice w engine does not have any burn anomaly build up rate right even without the w engine you might find yourself in some situations where having the faster burn anomaly could be even better because this allows our disorder to trigger at a much more timely state because this order can only trigger if the secondary anomaly status is applied to the enemy right honestly bernie's w engine although it's very good we do have a lot a lot of substitutes and if you don't want to use the roaring right gray signature weapons fusion comparators also an excellent excellent alternative and if you want to use grace signature weapon you do want to change your slot fight into pen ratio because the more it stacks the better it gets right a uh, weeping gemini electro lip gloss they're all very decent alternatives for uh, bernie's as well so basically for bernie's the w engine options are very very flexible then going into the drive disc uh this is gonna be super super straightforward the four piece best in slot is definitely gonna be our latest chaos jest two piece anomaly proficiency 30 as well as the fire electric damage increased by 15 percent and while off field increased ex special and assist attack by 20 percent when switching off field buff continues for five seconds once every 7.5 this is basically tailor made for bernice right uh just like caesar king with the proto punk uh don't really have any other close substitute so just get this four piece and just slap in the bernice you're good for the two piece you have quite a lot of options you can either go for two piece energy regeneration from string jazz two piece freedom blues for another 30 and normally proficiency or you can even go for two piece uh, powerful electro for 8% pen ratio so all of these can be really really dependent on what you like if you like the additional energy regeneration because you want to have a little bit more timely uptime for the ex special then feel free to use swing jets if you want to have absolute highest damage possible then freedom blues 30 anomaly proficiency is going to be the best in slot and then if you want to run any like for example grace w engine or any in the future units where we get a uh, pen ratio buffers or a lot of pen generally if you have a lot of pen in bernie subsets then getting for the two piece pen ratio can also be a very very helpful so uh, uh, then for the main stats, also very straightforward. For your slot 4 and slot 6, it's definitely going to be a normally proficiency and a normally mastery respectively. Exactly like Jane Doe, don't really have any other alternative. Then for our slot 5, it can either be fire damage or pen ratio, like I mentioned, depending on what are the subsets you have for Bernice, right? Now at this point, I also briefly want to touch on like I mentioned just now, the afterburn damage for Bernice can actually crit. So some players might be thinking of using crit rate for slot 4. But like again, like I mentioned earlier on, majority of Bernice damage is actually going to be coming from her actual burn trigger the burn damage as well as her raw multipliers from the EX flamethrower as well as the ultima, right? So with that established, we do still want to run anomaly proficiency because this still allows to deal a lot higher damage. Anomaly proficiency will still be the better main step for Bernice. And now finally jumping into Bernice Mindscape. So for Bernice Mindscape, we have pretty much already seen what she does in the early access kit review from the story trial. So I also won't be going into in depth for this. And I will be referencing to this CN content creator here, which ex showed us exactly what is the difference between a Mindscape between Mindscape, right? So the difference between Mindscape 0 to Mindscape 1, you can see over here, each afterburn damage increased from 10,392 to 13,360. And then the number of afterburn went up from 13 times to 18 times. As well as the burn anomaly buildup went from 80% at roughly the entire bar, right, 80% of the max bar, to 120% of the max bar, which means that you are guaranteed to trigger one burn from purely the afterburn alone. So generally speaking, this 
Kindred Flames with the additional heat, additional afterburn multiplier, as well as the afterburn fire anomaly buildup is a very, very powerful Mindscape one. If you do want to talk about value for Bernice, then Mindscape one is going to be a much better option compared to the signature weapon. Then for Bernice Mindscape two, when triggering afterburn, thermal penetration can stack up to five times lasting six seconds. And every single stack gives us a up to 20% pen ratio when any allied unit hits the enemy so not only does this improve our personal damage with bernice after burn it also improves the damage for our on-field dps so you can see that the difference for our afterburn, it went up from 13,360 to 15,017. And then if you want to talk about Jane, those basic attack damage, it went up from 1,100 to roughly 1,300. So Mindscape 2 is also a pretty good damage increase. And if you want to think about using Bronies with like a non-anomaly team, since it does give us a raw 20% pen ratio, you can consider getting this Mindscape 2 as well to greatly improve Bronies team-wide damage output. And then for Mindscape 4, it's really not that important. Increased crit rate as well is the last thing for one more second. Again, nobody really pulled for the Mindscape 4 just for the Mindscape 4. And at this point, you are probably going to be going for Bernie's Mindscape 6, which is going to be Burning Invitation. So this is a whole lot of text, but it can basically be summarized to this specifically. So you can see that from this footage from the CM player, the additional 1,800% multiplier is going to be dealing an additional 226,000 burn damage every single time when you want to use Bernie's EX special, right? So this will greatly improve Bernie's personal damage and it truly pretty much makes her like a main DPS uh, to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of the normal crit DPS you can see in our current meta, right? So, so now we've come to the final segment, which is going to be the overall team building and the Bernice actual performance when I've tested her out in game, right? So, generally speaking, even though Bernice as an all field DPS, you could technically slot her into pretty much any team you want because all field DPS is always going to be additional damage, right? But for the most part, the core function for Bernice is to trigger our disorder. She is basically one of, if not the most important unit to trigger disorder as frequently as possible because one of the issues that we have for our current anomaly team is that uh, no two different anomaly units can build up our anomaly at the same time. And this changes with Bernice. So currently, in my opinion, from what I've tested so far, the best in slot team comp for the absolute highest damage is going to be Bernice, Jane Doe, as well as Caesar King just for the absolute raw damage. But I found another substitute if you guys didn't put for Caesar King, is Jane Doe, Bernice, as well as Lucy. Because for units like Seth, as well as Caesar King, even though they both provide a substantial amount of buff that can provide a, quite a lot of damage from our main DPS, that buff only applies to the unit on field. So when Bernice is off field, all the afterburn damage, none of the buffs will be applied to Bernice directly. And this will be different for Lucy. Currently, Lucy is the only support in the game right now that we have that can buff both units at the same time after using her EX special. So I found myself having quite a lot of comfort running Lucy with Jane Doe and Bernice. Not to mention, the actual piloting ability for Lucy is also extremely straightforward. Essentially, use her whenever you have energy to cast her EX special. That's it. Uh, I like to press and hold to make the buff last a little bit longer and then you instantly swap into Bernice and then Bernice apply after Bernice you swap to Jane Doe. Then if you guys don't want to use this team or if you guys do not have Jane though, you can consider running another disorder team such as Grace or in the future if when we get Yanagi, it can also be an excellent, excellent team comp. I do find myself preferring Jane though with Bernice just because of how ridiculous Jane Doe's personal damage is. Currently, even though Grace can also proc disorder, uh, the raw damage is just a little bit low compared to Jane Doe specifically, right? So it is what it is. Uh, that is still going to be my favorite team. And if you want to use Bernice as a all-field DPS for a crit team, so if you want to use her with Soldier 11 and Lucy, you want to use her with Ellen, you want to use her with Chu Yuan, technically it is doable, but the performance will definitely be not as good compared if you were to use a stunner such as Qing Yi or even Koleda and uh, Lycon, right? So in summary for Bernice team building, although she's quite flexible, I do find her excelling the most in a Jane Doe disorder team comp or pretty much any disorder team comp that we're going to be getting in the future. So at this point, Bernice pool value, in my opinion, it is going to be very, very good, especially for players who have already pulled for Jane Doe and for players who want to play with a normally team and disorder team in the future, then I think Bernice is going to be an excellent, excellent choice. And all of your DPS role is going to be technically uh, retaining 
think more of its value compared to a main DPS, like a crit DPS, or even Jane Doe as a main anomaly DPS, since it tends to have less competition, right? But then again, it's a Xenozone Zero. Who knows what's the competition going to be like in the future? And one unfortunate thing is that she is the first off-field DPS of her kind. So in the future, if Xenozone Zero were to release even more off-field DPS, uh, then unfortunately, Bernice may be prone to power clear. But for that, we're going to have to wait and see in the future. For now, in my opinion, at M0 without Sinjur weapon, I think Bernice is a very, very complete kit. This entire testing has been done with her at M0. If you want to get out of Mindscapes, Mindscape 1, Mindscape 2, very considerable increase in damage uh, over the signature weapon, right? So that is going to be that for her pooling opinion. Okay, and with that, we have come to the end of Bernice early the access review hope you guys enjoyed these leave a thoughts in the comments down below how you guys find her when you guys pull for her next week and generally speaking i just she's really really hot i think that's gonna be all right the world today is gonna be hot because she's uh yep join twitch join youtube join discord all the best for your graduate pools and i'll see you guys next time take care